All right, a few more segments left here on the program tonight, live at 125 South College Avenue. It's the Beach House Grill tonight for the Corsite Steve Fairchild Coaches Show. FrontierAirlines.com is a place to go for the best values in the air, whether you want to follow the Rams or just want to get out of town. Frontier has you covered with over 80 destinations across the U.S., Mexico, and Costa Rica. Plan and book your next trip at FrontierAirlines.com. Brian Roth back with you, the host of the program, and happy to be joined by sophomore linebacker Shaquille Barrett, the sophomore at a bolt Baltimore, Maryland. Of course, played some college football in Nebraska, Omaha. Shaquille, first off, tell us how you got from Baltimore to Omaha. And you did it before you, you started your college football career. And life was a little rough there in Baltimore, and your brother was in Omaha. Can you tell us how you went from Baltimore to Nebraska to Omaha and now to Fort Collins? Well, in Baltimore, I was about to stop playing football. And I know football was a big part of my career and my life. So uh, I decided to go to Boys Town with my brother went a couple years before me where he was having uh, a lot of success. So I went there in 08 and continued playing football, had more structure and everything. And then I uh, graduated from Omaha, well, from Boys Town, then went to University of Nebraska at Omaha. And my brother also went there too, so it was kind of like we were staying together a little bit. Yeah. Did your brother play football at Nebraska Omaha or just a student? No, oh, he was a wrestler. He was a wrestler? Yeah. Were you a wrestler? I wrestled too. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. Nice. Uh, what is, so your brother wasn't a football player. He was a wrestler. What, uh, what was it about the sport of football that uh, kind of kept you going? Well, I knew football is, is more fun than wrestling. Wrestling is wrestling. Is wrestling like It's not fun. It's something that you do. Yeah. And if you're good at it, it's the only way you do it. But football is, is, football is fun. I like going around, flying around, tackling people, trying to make plays yeah. and winning. Well, you've certainly done uh, all three of those things so far here at Colorado State. So Nebraska, Omaha, you're playing uh, kind of a kind of a hybrid linebacker rush end there. All of a sudden, they drop their program. What's going through your mind at that point, and how did you end up at Colorado State? Uh, I was shocked when they dropped the program. I immediately started thinking of other options to come and play football. Uh, uh, one of our coaches at University of Nebraska, Omaha, got in contact with a coach here and recommended me to him. And then we got in contact and just kept talking, come out here and visit. And I liked it here, and that's how I landed here. Yeah, there, there was a lot of folks that were excited about you coming here. Certainly may have had some high expectations, but what about you? What were your expectations here this year as a newcomer to this, this football team? I just wanted to build from what I did last year and just continue progressing. I don't ever want to go back a couple of steps. I always want to move forward. So that's what I just want to do, come here and have a better season this, this year than I had last year. Uh, you certainly have had an outstanding first four games. Shaquille Barrett, linebacker, joining us on the program, the reigning Mountain West Conference Defensive Player of the Week. Congratulations, by the way, on that. Thanks. So let's go back to the fumble recovery and touchdown run. Take us through the play, and how exciting was that? Well, I was, re I was reading my keys, and... The ball carry went outside as I was pursuing over the top, and a blocker came and tried to block me. He actually blocked me towards the ball carrier, and I was pursuing the ball, and scouting came in on the tackle, and the ball came out, and I just got big eyes, bent down, pick it up, and just ran to the end zone. <laughs> Had you ever scored a touchdown before in your career? Not my college career. <laughs> that was the first one? Then. Yeah. Yeah, well, job well done, and I, I really thought that was the big, big play of that football game. So. Are you starting to feel pretty comfortable out there playing middle linebacker and outside linebacker? It's positions that you're a little bit new to and playing at the Division One level. Are you starting to get comfortable? Yeah, I'm getting comfortable. Just uh, continue learning everything, still reading my keys, trying to like, get better because I uh, get better at tackling. I've been not missing any tackles, just learning how to play faster and reading keys faster. I'm getting more comfortable. Yeah, well, you've certainly done a great job of filling in the stead of first uh, Skelton and then Mike Sisson. Great year so far. Now the Rams are really counting on you the rest of the year. Thanks for joining us. No, thanks. Okay, that's Shaquille Barrett. Again, he's perhaps the MVP of the defense along with Norley Cappy to this point. Thank you, Shaquille. All right, we'll take a timeout. We'll talk to his position coach, Bernard Clark, when we come back from Delegate Sports and the Colorado State Sports Network. All right, a few more segments left here on the program. Live at the Beach House Grill, Old Town, Fort Collins for another edition of the Coors Light, Steve Fairchild Coaches Show. 
Rams off to a three and one start. They get San Jose State coming up this Saturday out at Hughes Stadium. 2 p.m. is the kickoff for that homecoming game. And we're happy to bring in a, another guest. It's the newest member of the coaching staff, Bernard Clark, linebackers coach for CSU. Bernard, thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thank Making you. his debut here on the radio program, although we've already had you on the TV program. So you're a well, wildly better. They wanted to see my face before they heard my voice. I guess that's That's why. right. That's right. <laughs> um, you have a face for television, unlike myself. I'm no, kind of relegated. Radio, which is good. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we just had Shaquille Barrett uh, up here with us. He's been nothing short of outstanding this year. Talk a little bit about him, his adjustment to Division One football and to Colorado State, and what makes him so good. Well, he's a very humble young man. The great thing about Shaquille is he's extremely coachable. When I correct him on something, he goes out and he corrects the mistake right away. He's not one of those guys who doesn't pay attention to what the coach is trying to tell him. And that's the great thing about Shaq. He's very, very coachable. Yeah. You had Mike Sisson as one of your linebackers. Mm -hmm. He goes down early. All of a sudden, you have a fairly young linebacking core. Yeah. Talk a little bit about them and, and kind of molding them into the unit that has become one of the strong suits of the Rams. Well, everybody knows how great Mike is. Mike's an unbelievable player. That's what I loved about the game last week. For some reason, people thought we couldn't win without Mike Sisson. And the great thing about it is I tell all the linebackers, make sure you learn all three positions. Learn Mike, learn Will, and learn Sam. Because you never know what's going to happen, what situation is going to happen. And when that situation happened, you know, I moved Shaq to Mike, moved James Kelton, uh, Sam linebacker, and put a rack pole in there, and the guys just kept on rolling with it, and that's the great thing about it. Yeah. One of the things that I loved to, to see last week at, in Logan is go out for the opening coin toss, and in fact, go out to the coin toss, the overtime. There's Michael Sisson Absolutely. walking out on crutches. What, what does he still mean to this team, and what, what can his impact still be despite the injury? Well, Mike still coaches the guys on the sideline. When, he, when they come off the field, Mike is still telling them, you're doing this wrong, you're doing that wrong. When I can't get to him, Mike makes sure he gets to him. And that's the great thing about Mike. He's still a leader, mm -hmm. and guys still look up to him, and they still listen to what he has to say. So that part of Mike is always going to be there. He's always going to be our team captain. And they know what he's done in the past. He's not talking from things he hasn't experienced. He's experienced these things, and he's done a great job of these things. So they listen to what Mike has to say. But Art Clark, linebackers coach, joining us here on the Steve Fairchild Show, you, you Played your college ball at the University of Miami. Had mm -hmm. a defensive coordinator down there by the name of uh, Louis Lubick, I believe. Sonny Lubick. <laughs> well, Louis is his real name. Now. Is it? Yeah, oh, I didn't I know believe, that. I believe, right, Steve? Am I right about I that? I hope yeah. you're right. <laughs> That's right. Otherwise, Sonny's going to call me up. I, well, I can't do a good Sonny impression. <laughs> Give us, a, give us a sunny story. You have any sunny stories from back in the day? Uh, not hey. really. No, no stories. The great thing about Coach Lubick was he was a player's coach. He was yeah. the kind of guy I can always go sit and talk to. He was always, always laid back. I've never seen the man get upset. I've never seen him get, you know, I mean, Steve may have saw it, but I never saw it as a yeah. player. I never saw him get upset. He was always real low-keyed. When he was talking to me on the headset, because he was in the box, he said, this is what I need you to do, because I need you to handle it. And that's the great thing about Coach Lubick. Yeah, and he was uh, a big part in getting you out to Colorado State. You coached with uh, Dave Wanstead in Pittsburgh the last few years. So I, how did you make your way out here to Fort Collins? And I, again, I know Sonny was a part of that. Yeah, well, unfortunately, I only coached at Pittsburgh for less than a year. Yeah. We were co-Big East champions. For some reason, they decided to let us go, whatever the reason may be. But when the job came available here, the first person I called was Coach Lubick. I said, Coach Lubick, I noticed that as a linebacker or a D-line job available, could you make a call for me? You know, make a call Coach Fairchild and see what he thinks about me coming out for an interview. And he made the call for me, and great thing about it, him and Coach Fairchild are still real good friends. So when he told him about me, he brought me in for the interview, and, you know, I did what I needed to do, and luckily I'm here. Final thought, Bernard, Bernard before we let you go. One thing I, I've noticed with you, and, and I know others have noticed, you bring an energy and, and, and a passion <laughs> that to, to coaching. <laughs> but you can see it, it's, it's a palpable thing. Uh, talk a little bit about your coaching philosophy and how you approach things on a daily basis. Well, it's kind of like the way I play. I play with a lot of energy. I play with a lot of passion. I coach the same way because this game means so much to me. I love what I do for a living. I love coaching. I love helping these players become better men, better husbands, and better fathers. And in order to do that, you have to show them the passion that you have for it. You have to make them understand, I'm here for you. I'm trying to do everything I can to make you the best person that you can be and in the process make you an outstanding football player. But you have to play this game with passion. This is not a game you can like. 
and you're taking your body and you're running to someone else full speed, you can't like doing that. You have to absolutely love doing that. You have to have a passion for it. So that's what I try to bring to the game. Well, I think uh, Ram fans have seen it this year with the defense. I think you, you're a big part of that. So, hey, listen, if Pittsburgh doesn't want you, we do here at <laughs> Thank Colorado you very much. State. I appreciate Bernard. It. Thanks for joining us. Okay, thank Bernard you. Bernard Clark, okay. linebacker coach here at Colorado State. We'll be rejoined by head coach Steve Fairchild after this from Elegant Sports and the Colorado State Sports Network. Back here, a couple more segments left on the program. Beach House Grill, Old Town, Fort Collins. Steve Fairchild joining us uh, once again up here. And thanks to Bernard Clark and Shaquille Barrett. And Steve, comment a little bit. I know you've talked about Shaquille, but how about Bernard Clark? He's the newcomer to the staff. And uh, I, obviously, he, he brings that passion to the game. Well, he's got a great background. He, you know, as a player, he played on those Miami teams that... Uh, you know, we're as good, a, I think, as good a defense as the, there's been in college football. He was a high draft pick in the NFL, uh, you know, played at the NFL level, coached with guys like Dave Wonstadt, uh, you know, just a tremendous background. And, and when we had the chance to hire Bernard, it was all over that. I mean, that was a no-brainer. And uh, he's come in, and, you know, his, his football expertise and the energy he brings is really key to our program. But I'll tell you what, as a person, uh, you know, it's, it's really a tremendous thing to watch him work because he really does truly care about kids. And, uh, you know, I, I even learned something today. You know, I mean, I, I got something reaffirmed today. You know, we have a Bible study with our coaches on Wednesday mornings. And, uh, you know, Bernard, we were talking about some things, and Bernard made the comment about separating a player's performance on the field with who he is off the field. And, and I think sometimes we, sometimes we do that as coaches. You know, we, we, we see a guy play really well, and we want to like him, and we... we see a guy play poorly and, we, and we're mad at him but uh you know what they do on the field is not who they are and the bottom line is you know progressing them as a person and getting them graduated and and, and watching them grow up and, and you know we had a nice visit with bernard about that so there's so much he brings to the table i'm just really happy he's on our coaching staff yep so i think ram fans uh, are happy about that too of course the rams get san jose state coming up uh, this weekend two o'clock out at hughes stadium and the game also gives fans the opportunity to feed the hungry here in northern colorado it kicks off the university's annual cans around the oval which uh goes to the larimer county food bank steve uh, talk a little bit about that because i know it's something you and your wife nancy yeah, are a big you, part of my wife nancy was really you know jumped on this and we're, we're going to donate 10 cents for every fan that that comes to the game and uh, to the larimer county food bank and and there's also a canned food drive like you know and uh, the coaches' wives will be there collecting food and uh, you know we're, we're all so darn fortunate uh, to be in the position we're in and uh, I, I know me personally I've never I've never gone without in terms of a meal and I can't I can't imagine how tough that would be so uh, I hope there's 50,000 people there I'd love to pay I'd love to pay the money and uh, and I just would like to kind of shout out to everybody please support this uh, it's a it's a good cause and it's helping people that are in need well, again get out to St. Lubbock Field at Hughes Stadium coming up this weekend and uh, help fight hunger and help cheer on the Rams all right one final time out we'll be back we'll talk about the opponent this week the Spartans of San Jose State. That's next from Bellingham Sports and the Colorado State Sports Network. Final segment here tonight from the Beach House Grove. Of course, I Steve Fairchild. Coaches show another great in-house audience here tonight. Again, we're here every Wednesday night, 6 to 7 p.m., but of course, we're not going to be here coming up uh, next week with the bye week. Of course, the Rams have San Jose State coming up on Saturday, homecoming game at St. Lubbock Field at Hughes Stadium. San Jose State coming in at 1-3. and three. In fact, they're coming off a win, 34-24 against New Mexico State, that game in San Jose here from this past weekend. And, Head coach Mike McIntyre is in his second year there, and we were just talking off the air, Steve. Uh, that's a very experienced coaching staff, isn't it? Uh, you know, they, they've got a very, very experienced staff. I mean, a lot of those guys have uh, coached a lot of ball. They've coached in the Pac-10. They've coached in the Big Ten. And uh, they've even had, got a lot of guys that have coached in the NFL. So uh, they will be prepared. They will be ready to play. Uh, you know, our, our job, obviously, is we've got to get our football team to forget about what's happened last week and, and come out there and play. Because if we do not, I'm telling you, they, they'll run all over us. I mean, that back they have is... A tremendous football player he's gone the distance against everybody they've played so uh you know we're gonna have our hands full we're gonna have to play with a lot of passion we're gonna have to wrap up defensively we're gonna have to step up our game offensively and and uh this is a good opponent coming in Rutley is the running back he went for 209 last week as well and it also looked like they're playing two quarterbacks in last week's game yeah. do you expect to see two quarterbacks we do you know obviously they, they've got a little package for their guy that's a runner 
Uh, but the, the main concern is Rutley because if you give him a crease, he's going the distance. And, and it, 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 it could be 60 yards, it could be 90 yards, and uh, he's going to score on you. So the second we don't take the right pursuit angles or wrap up, uh, this, we're going to let this guy have a day on us, and we can't do that. What do they do offensively? Are they a spread team? Yeah, they're a little bit of a spread team. Uh, you know, they, they can run it and throw it. They remind me a little bit of what we just played at Utah State. How about defensively? The uh, Spartans come into this game having played somewhat well. They played against UCLA, very tough on the road. What do they do defensively? You know, they're a 4-3 team. Uh, they remind me of New Mexico a little bit, even though New Mexico is in the 4-2-5. Uh, they keep the ball in front of them, they make you earn it, and they tackle. So those are teams we've struggled against offensively because they make you perform and execute for a lot of plays to get down the field. So, you know, we're going to have to – you know, step up our passing game, obviously, continue to run the ball physically, and as always, the penalties and turnovers will be the key. You know, it's a program, and speaking of San Jose State, that comes in. They win last week. They snap a 13-game losing skid. They finally get off the snide last week. Does that make them more dangerous this week? Yeah, it does. They tasted victory, and, uh, you know, they're certainly coming in here thinking they can win. And, uh, you know, and again, it's, it's just like us going into Utah State. You know, we're big underdogs, but, uh, you know, if you turn the ball over and start that penalties, uh, anything could happen. Yeah, final thought before we let you go, Coach. And it should be a pretty good crowd coming up Saturday afternoon. Weather is supposed to be fantastic. Give us a, a key or two to what you think you guys will have to do well. I just think if we play our game, if we show up and play with the energy and the passion and the technique, we, you know, we wrap up defensively, we play physical run football on offense, we'll be fine. But, uh, that's our chore. We can't think we're something we're not. We've got we to gotta bring our A game. I feel good to go forward and one into that bye week, wouldn't it? That'd be great. Yeah. Coach, as always, thank you very much. Appreciate it. And Coach Steve Fairchild, and thank you to everybody that joined us here tonight. Shaquille Barrett, Ram uh, linebacker, the sophomore, and, of course, Bernard Clark, linebackers coach as well. CSU and San Jose State coming up at 2. We'll see you then. Thanks for joining us here from the Beach House Grill.